Here's the 30 second lesson on what legends know. Never practice nunchucks in a crowded room. Never eat chole before a road trip. Always take your shirt off before you iron it. Don't take a call near a swimming pool. And don't forget, saving is not investing. Legends don't just save, they invest in mutual funds. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully. In the first of my two Kattak letter episodes on Kachatibu Island issue, I had mentioned that in 2013, I had written a national interest column headlined Dear Narendra Bhai that was like an appeal to Narendra Modi, then the chief minister in Gujarat, but already on his way to becoming the party's prime ministerial candidate and the most pre preeminent figure by now in his party. What was this appeal? This was to say that the UPA government had finalized a land border agreement with Bangladesh and this was being stalled by his party's older leaders, that is LK Advani and Sushma Swaraj. And while Arun Jaitley, Rajnath Singh, who were more realistic, they were trying to find a solution, the other two were blocking it. I had made the argument to him that it's very important for India that this agreement goes through because Sheikh Hasina was now pushing Bangladesh back or pulling Bangladesh back from where it had reached earlier under Khalida Zia and other regimes, where it had gone towards Islamization, it had become more of an Islamic nation and also it had become very close to the, to the Pakistanis, to the ISI, a lot of extremists were working there and also a lot of Indian insurgents had har safe harbour there. Sheikh Hasina had reversed all of that. And now because she had stuck her own neck out on this agreement and there was something signed with the UPA awaiting ratification by parliament, it needed his touch or his nudge to make it possible. Because then what was the option? What did we want? We already have an Urdu and Urdu or maybe Urdu and Punjabi speaking Pakistan on our western borders. Did we now want a Bengali speaking Pakistan on our eastern borders. That's the point I made. And that's the column I will share with you today in the video version. As you know, what I'm also doing is picking up some of my earlier columns and giving you these in video and audio version. One, so that those of you who haven't read these can do so. And second, to also create a video and audio archive. After all, when you write something, it's only fair that you leave it you leave it to the scrutiny, to the brutal scrutiny of the World Wide Web forever in, in every format. So this is in that series as well. So here goes what I wrote and this was published in the Indian Express originally on 31st August 2013. So this is how I made my point. Here it goes. Why I am not addressing this appeal to Adarni Advani ji or Sushma Swaraj first or to dear Rajnath ji or Arun Jaitley. Even though I might have known all four of them more closely than you, mostly because we all live in New Delhi. It is because in their current mood, the first two are unlikely to give anybody a hearing on any thought that is remotely conciliatory. And the last two have tried, are trying, but sometimes seem like giving up, which is scary for India's supreme national interest. That is why, Narendra Bhai, you need to weigh in. Because moments like these arrive only once in decades in a nation's history. And if we lose them, irrespective of whether our politics is broken at the inter-party level or in this specific case, most regrettably at the intra-party level, our future generations will not forgive us. Your intervention is needed because the matter rests within your party and is caught within its messy but utterly transparent internal power tussle. Your party has messed up such virtuous reformist legislation already. It has failed to live up to your own expectations on the food bill. In fact, Murli Banohar Joshi's speech on it in the Lok Sabha sounded like he had borrowed a pamphlet from the NAC or Arunduti Roy had ghosted it. And if it now loses India this great opportunity, despite total political and strategic convergence, you will look a lesser leader in your own party and more importantly on the national stage. That long, somewhat rhetorical preamble was necessary because the issue and the country it refers to, Bangladesh, is a red rag to your party and the RSS, 
who see it as Pakistan on our eastern borders. But here is an opportunity to change the story and the history with Bangladesh. Not one senior leader of your party has as yet produced an argument against the land boundary agreement that India and Bangladesh have signed and which, which now awaits ratification through a constitutional amendment because it involves exchange of territory, which by the way, I'm now adding, which by the way, Kachatibu did not. On several occasions, your party president, Rajnath Singh, has very sagaciously stated that his party supports the agreement, yet it hasn't been able to vote for it because of last-minute objections. The opposition of the BJP's Assam unit, etc. are just convenient excuses. The issue is caught in the strife within the BJP. We need to understand two key issues here. One, what does this agreement entail? And two, why does it represent a strategic opportunity not seen in our neighborhood since the Shimla Agreement? which you will agree Indira Gandhi lost in not having the LOC formally sanctified as our border. We are paying for that blunder now on our western flanks. Should we make a similar one on the east? And should India lose out just because Hastinapur Maharathis of your party can't be seen to be thinking or working together? And if you fail to count now, what kind of a leader are you? Firstly, what is this agreement? India and Bangladesh, East Pakistan then, inherited a complex border from Sir Cyril Radcliffe, who gave each side enclaves deep inside the other's territory. These involve not much territory, but about 51,000 people. Because of our cussed bilateral relationship, neither side gives easy access to the other to its enclaves. Because to reach your own enclave on the other side, you have to go through a lot of the other side's territory and vice versa. As a result, these territories have become stateless sovereign republics like little Bantustans. These are dens of thugs, smugglers, terrorists, gun runners and illegal immigration mafias. Even jihadi groups and the ISI have routinely used these as staging posts as these are permanent gaps in our border surveillance. It was only now, with the rise of a friendly, liberal and courageous Sheikh Hasina government in Bangladesh, that the two countries have signed this historic agreement to exchange these enclaves and rationalize our border. Alongside, we have signed an agreement for joint border management. But that is not possible until the enclaves are sorted out. Effectively, there is no loss of territory for India. The government has held 17 meetings with the opposition leaders to brief them on the agreement. And barring staunch opposition from Assam Gan Parishad and a qualified one from Amta Banerjee, the entire parliament is behind this agreement. That includes the BJP as confirmed by your party president in many public statements. But so broken is your party's relationship with the Congress, blame for which is shared equally and so intense the antagonisms within your own top brass that the opportunity is being lost. It was only after a wide consensus had been obtained on this agreement that our President Pranam Mukherjee in March this year made a public commitment in his speech at Dhaka University that the agreement will be presented for ratification in India's parliament. To not do so now will be a disgrace for India. It will also be the loss of a strategic opportunity that may not wait or in fact may never come in a generation because in December or latest by early January, Bangladesh also goes for general elections. Sheikh Hasina has been incredibly brave in turning around her India policy but our inability to deliver on two solemn agreements, Tista Waters blocked by Mamta Banerjee and now the Land Boundary Pact, it, it is already becoming her killer embarrassment that she went down on her knees to India and got her proud country humiliated and so on. That's what her opposition is saying. If she loses and Khalida, backed by Islamists, returns, India will be the biggest loser. You have no time to lose. Now the second point. Why is this agreement a once in a generation strategic opportunity? Because the democratizing of Bangladesh's politics, society and public discourse is as important to India as that of Pakistan's. And Sheikh Hasina has been doing just that. From being a sanctuary for our rebels, particularly the Alpha and a playground for the ISI and jihadi forces, Bangladesh is now an ally. Remember how it has handed over our fugitives? particularly Arbinda Rajakhova and, and is holding Anup Chetia and the political risks it entails. These, these two were the most prominent alpha leaders at that point. If Tripura can convert some of its underground gas into power, it's only because Bangladesh has let you transport those giant generators by barge through its rivers. 
they would have never reached there through the narrow winding mountain roads. Hasina has forced the ISI to shut shop. She has also disbanded the Bangladesh rifles, which had become such a malevolent presence on our borders. Remember that ghastly visual of the bodies of our BSF patrolmen killed by the BDR Bangladesh rifles carried hanging by their limbs on bamboo sticks? The courts under her have given judgments holding both the martial law impositions by General Ziaur Rahman and Arshad unconstitutional and thereby laws enacted by them which effectively converted Bangladesh into an Islamic state. These have been ab abrogated. Bangladesh is therefore restored to its original secular liberal constitution. One can always have a super liberal argument against the government banning the jamaat e islami the Bangladesh government banning the jamaat e islami on its handing out death sentences to old radicals and jamaatis for complicity in Pakistani army's atrocities in 1971. But certainly that cannot be your party's argument or yours. The truth is, while the world celebrates the rise of a secular Indonesia as a great liberal success story in the Islamic world, Bangladesh with its 16.3 crore people then, that was the population in 2013, with its 16.3 crore people, mostly very poor, 89% of whom are Muslim and 10% Hindu, deserves that admiration first for the way it has transformed even more than Indonesia. Nothing underlines the positive change in Bangladesh better than the fact that its High Commissioner Tariq E. Karim specially called on you in Ahmedabad on July 27 for an hour-long meeting to seek your support for the land boundary agreement. When Americans have not yet taken you off the blacklist, Europeans are engaging with you but still sort of gingerly and diplomats of no other Muslim majority country will like to be seen anywhere near you. He and his government got their share, that is the Bangladesh High Commissioner and his government got their share of abuse for this back home, but they did not flinch. And you want to know how fragile these gains are? The first radical to be convicted and given the death sentence, Abul Kalam Azad, the red-bearded ideologue better known as Bachu Razakar or Lal Dadi, has already escaped. And where else to? But Pakistan, now harbored by the jihadis there. Scores of others under trial now are praying for the defeat of Hasina's Awami League this winter and the rise on the streets of a group called hifazat -e islam which grew like much Bangladeshi radicalism from Chittagong and whose 13-point charter is borrowed straight from the Taliban. I may or may not agree with you, Narendra Bhai, but I know you believe you are being swept to power next summer. What kind of Bangladesh would you rather be dealing with on your eastern borders? Would you like a relatively secular, liberal Bangladesh or would you like a Bengali-speaking Pakistan on your eastern borders? You have an opportunity to determine that now and even your critics and adversaries, even the minorities that fear you will bless you for this, hailing it as a great act of liberal foresight and a signal of your arrival as a truly national leader and a patriot. Now I come to the epilogue to update this. As we all know, Narendra Modi did not wane at that point and at that point, this agreement had to wait. Fortunately, Sheikh Hasina won her next election and this agreement, exactly the same agreement was ratified in 2015 under the watch of Narendra Modi. So finally, he did the right thing by the nation. Remember, in that deal also, there were exchanges of territories and there were complaints. There were complaints by people on the Indian side in West Bengal in Assam, etc, etc. There were also deals made and exchanges made and barters done while marking out the maritime borders between India and Bangladesh because those are very complicated given the Sundarbans and the Delta, Delta region there. But all of this was done by the same Narendra Modi government in the larger national interest. That's the reason I thought it is good for us to remember this in some detail when the Kachatibu Agreement of 1974, followed up by another one in 1976, has become such a polarizing political story in this election campaign now.